Hi, Microbe Hunter here and those strange moving fibers that you see, well I found them here on this very face mask and those fibers they almost look like they're worms and yeah moving and I've actually received emails from people worried that these are actually worms living in their skin and now also in the face mask. Well I can reassure you nothing like that. These are normal textile fibers from clothing and in this video here I'm going to show you how you can isolate them and how you can make them move and at the end of the video I'm also going to show you how you can make those spaghetti noodles move because the physics behind it is, is actually quite similar. Now what I have done is I took directly the face mask and put it directly beneath a very low-cost handheld microscope and even they were able to reveal those textile fibers. Now most of them are not moving um, right now but later on I'm going to show you what you have to do to make them move. Actually it's, it's quite straightforward and simple but I want you to watch it to the very end of the video and at the end of the video I'm also going to show you how real worms look like, real live worms look like under the microscope and you're going to see that they look very different than those textile fibers. Now this fiber over here almost seems to breathe a little bit or there seems to be a heartbeat there um, pulsating but of course it's all nonsense. I wanted to get a better image quality so I placed the face mask directly under my stereo microscope and here of course I was able to see the fibers as well and here too they were kind of moving in a very interesting manner almost like uh, they are alive. Of course they're not alive, the physics behind it is of course responsible uh, for this uh, movement. And of course I've also tried uh, to find uh, basically the fibers um, in different places um, and I've also, I'm also going to show this to you. I'm going to show you where you can isolate those fibers yourself so that you really believe me at the end that these are actually not worms but actually textile fibers that can be found in the environment and as a, as a matter of fact they make up a large portion of our house dust. Well this is all you have to do. This is how you collect those fibers. You pay, uh, put a uh, piece of sticky tape on your t-shirt, on your sweater and you peel it off and along come many of these fibers. I put everything on a microscope glass slide and uh, under the microscope we can already see that there are not a few but maybe thousands and thousands of these uh, textile fibers. Now most of them are not able to move because they are stuck down to the slide but if you look at the corner, at the edge, some of the fibers are actually sticking out away and these are the fibers that we're going to have now a closer look at because they are able to move freely and I'm going to make them move for you and uh, if you want to of course uh, if you have a microscope at home you can of course also try this at home. But what am I doing? <laughs> How do I make them move? Well again you have to wait a little bit until the end of the video. I will tell you the following. It's not static electricity but even though that might also work but it's not static electricity what I'm using here. Well in any case um, I've been uh, searching around um, a lot uh, for interesting places on this tape and I found a variety of different fibers but most of them were actually in dark color and the reason is is it's because of course white fibers on a white background cannot be very easily seen so most of those textile fibers that you see can be visible because they have a good contrast to the background. This picture here now I've used uh, my compound microscope and here you can again see that uh, the image clarity and the image quality is yet a little bit higher. Of course I also wanted to make the move. Yeah, Here we go again and it's moving into one direction and after a few seconds it's uh, moving backwards. And I think I'm going to now reveal to you what I have done to make the move and that is, is of course it's moisture. Uh, all you have to do is, is you have to breathe carefully on the microscope slide. You have to breathe on those fibers and what they will do is, is they will absorb the moisture of your breath and uh, basically they will then move and then when you stop breathing they will actually continue to move because they start to dry up again and by drying there are again new tensions that emerge and then they will bend backwards. As a matter of fact behind my computer monitor I found a lot of house dust and even this house dust is made of many many fibers um, and they of course are also able to absorb water um, and uh, therefore they are able to deform and they are able to then make 
this movement that appears to be very natural. But in reality, it's simply a physical process. And of course, this movement is not because they are alive. So you do not have to worry about any microscopic worms in the face mask. Um, it would simply, they would simply not be able to survive. And this is basically what I've done. I basically simply carefully exhaled and have blown on my uh, face mask and then the fiber started to absorb the moisture and if you are actually taking off a face mask then the face mask will dry and this will also make the fibers move. So you see this is a quite a straightforward process. Of course I would like to know, also reveal to you how I made those spaghetti noodles move. The principle actually is uh, quite uh, similar. As a matter of fact it's the same. All you have to do is, is you take a few spaghetti noodles, dry noodles, and you make them moist with water. And you bend them into shape and then you simply do a little bit of time-lapse video like I have done and also reverse the video and it always makes it appear like like, um, it's kind of moving and wiggling back and forth almost a little bit like those nematode worms and this is how real worms look like under the microscope they are in water so they have to be surrounded by water because otherwise they would immediately die off because it's too dry and so you can see that actually their movement is much stronger and uh, the worms actually really look like worms <laughs> and not just like irregular fibers that's an oligoheat worms called Ialosoma, also found in a pond water sample. And as a matter of fact, you can see even into the worm and you can see the organs. And I think it should be very clear from these video clips here that they look very different to the moving fibers. Well, at this point, I would like to invite you, of course, uh, to subscribe to this YouTube channel if you like microscopy videos like this. I would like to say a big thank you, of course, also to my patron supporters here. And of course, at the very end, Please do not worry um, about uh, these worms uh, in your face mask because they are not worms and don't believe everything that you hear um, online and in, in the internet. Yeah, if you have any further questions, please do leave your comments behind. Happy microbe hunting as always. See you around next time. Bye bye.